Hi, welcome to the show. To start the week, we've got an interview with a climber who had a 2014 to beat all others. He made the first reverse of the Fitzroy Massif in Patagonia and then topped out the Dawn Wall. It can only be Tommy Caldwell. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? He's a little boggers for him to climb on. So, Tommy, welcome back to Epic TV. Yeah, great Congra to be here. Congratulations on the PLA door. Thank you. So last year was a massive year for you. I mean, you're probably best known now for the Dawn Wall. Been on Ellen, Barack Obama's a fan. <laughs> but it all started with Fitzroy. Right, yeah. Tell us the story of Fitzroy. What are the statistics? How long is it? How big is it? I think it's like a five kilometer long ridge line. And the vertical elevation gain, you know, the upward climbing was about 5,000 feet. Um, we did probably over a hundred rappels. Um, yeah, it was just an epically long, convoluted traverse through the mountains. Fitzroy, Argentina, Patagonia. 12th to the 16th of February, 2014. The full traverse of the range. 4,000 meter ascent, 7A, 65 degrees. Alpinists, Tommy Caldwell and Alex Honnold, USA. From 12th to the 16th of February, 2014, Caldwell and Honnold succeeded in completing the full traverse of the range from north to south. They had to climb seven summits. Agoya Goyeme, Agoya Mermoz, Chero Fitzroy, Agoya Poinsonon, Agoya Rafael Juarez, Agoya San Exupere, and Agoya S. A total of 4,000 meters of ascent, a maximum grade of 7A with ice sections at 65 degrees. Such a traverse could only be contemplated by very fast climbers. You have to be able to move really efficiently through a large amount of technical terrain. Um, so to do that, you have to go really light. So we brought almost nothing. We had one 35 liter pack and one 25 liter pack only. We had one sleeping bag. Both Alex and I just cuddled in one sleeping bag for five nights in a row. We climbed in approach shoes most of the time just because you're climbing over so much ground that you're, my feet just couldn't couldn't handle being in climbing shoes that long. I think people have been thinking about the Fitz Traverse for 15 years. You know, as, you, as you drive to Patagonia, it's the first thing you see is that mountain line. It's the most obvious objective in the place. And I think people had failed mostly because their ropes wore out. So that was a huge thing. We, we decided to simul climb almost everything because um, it, your rope just lasts longer if you never actually put weight on it. Alex made quite a big deal of the fact that he was kind of new to alpinism. Right. He'd done a lot of big walling. He made a lot of jokes <laughs> about this being his first alpine route. Yeah. Um, do you think they compare quite well, that and what Alex normally does, big walling, moving fast? Is it pretty similar? Uh, I think the technical details of what you're doing is quite different, but the mentality of what Alex is really good at is similar. I think the main reason Alex is so good at what he does and could be a really good alpinist is because he can look at situations that most people would think were scary or impossible um, and just make light of them. You know, he thinks they're no big deal. And so that was a huge asset to climbing the Fitz Traverse. There are so many times where we look up at these giant ice covered walls with blobs of rhyme hanging everywhere and things falling down all around us. And he'd be like, dude, this is no big deal. Nothing's going <laughs> to hit us. Just keep going, you know, be climbing through this horrendous waterfall and ice is like freezing to our bodies and crackling off our jackets and we're putting cams in the icy cracks and they're just sliding right out and he's like well no if you, you know this is we're gonna be fine you know <laughs> <laughs> you know it's getting dark outside and he's just like he's like you got this dude no no big deal you know i think that is probably above all else the main asset to a great alpine climber Start from VA anyway, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, rock definitely feels sticky. I'm cold on the fingers, though. Do you think this deserves to be recognised in the same way the dorm wall is? The dorm wall's had all this attention. I know you've, it's been your project for a long time, but do, do you feel like this is an equal achievement? Uh, for my life, not at all. I mean, the dorm wall was a seven-year obsession. I completely reformatted the way that I lived to pursue the dorm wall. The Fitz Traverse was almost an afterthought. I mean, we went to Patagonia uh, that year, not even sure what we were going to climb. Um, the Fitz Traverse was something I had thought about, but I just thought it was too big. I didn't think it was ever something we would be able to do. But being with Alex, he's like, let's go for it, man. We might as well go for it. And, and the way that the, the mountains had formed ice and, you know, just the weather patterns and, you know, that traverse, we climbed to the north faces of everything and we repelled the south faces. And the north faces are the first things to shed the ice in the southern hemisphere. So the fact that we were going that way across the mountain range just you know, a lot of other, a lot of people try to climb elsewhere in the mountain range during the early parts of that window and were unsuccessful because they're too icy, but the conditions were good enough. They're actually still quite bad on when we climbed, but <laughs> they were good enough to make it work. And has it got you interested in doing more long, hard alpine routes? The experience was extraordinary and something I will never forget. And I think I'm naturally suited to alpine climbing, but I'm a dad, you know, I don't want to die. Fitz Traverse for me was over that edge of what I thought I can responsibly do as a father. You thought it was too much? Too much, yeah. It, it was not a responsible thing to do as a father. And after a year like last year, you had the Fitzroy Traverse. You came here to Chamonix, we did an interview, an obvious highlight, mm -hmm. imagine, and the dorm wall. <laughs> that was an amazing year. Yeah. What can you do to top it? Uh, I'm not, my goal is not to top it. <laughs> that would be rough. Like, I'm not going to go back to El Cap and find a 15-year project <laughs> right now. Um, but you never know. You know, I'm a, I'm a very goal-oriented person. I love the idea of pursuing something big and impossible and, uh, you know, impossible seeming. And I love that process of discovery. You know, the Don Wall for me, I think most people become a better climber and then they pick objectives that fit into their ability level. For me, the Don Wall was sort of like finding a an objective that was the biggest thing I could think of and trying to make myself into the person that could do that. And I learned that that process is cool. You know, it was that for seven years, I woke up every day at like five o'clock in the morning and I was like, I'm gonna train hard and I'm gonna do everything I can to pursue that. And it was an amazing way to live. Um, you know, I think everybody that was close to me, they could always see the fire in my eyes and know that that pursuit was such this life driving force for me. So it's hard to imagine not living like that. And I don't have that right now, honestly. I mean, you would think topping out the Don Wall would be this, you know, this really heroic moment that would, you know, it's the realization of this big long goal. For me, it was kind of sad because it was the end of a relationship. Are you feeling a bit lost now? Like you want something to replace it? Uh, you know, I think it's too fresh still. I'm, you know, I'm writing a book now, so my focus has been there. Um, but I, I know I need that focus, so. You know, there was a time in my life where I wanted to be a great sport climber and a great competition climber, and, um, you know, it wasn't like when I did my hardest sport climb, that wasn't the end of my career. You know, I just moved on to big wall climbing, so I'm not gonna move on to big, scary alpine routes, but, um, you know, I never know. I wish I could give you a better answer for what was <laughs> next, but just have to wait and see. Well, we'll enjoy watching. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for talking to us. Yeah, no problem. Cheers, Tommy. If you'd like to see more of him, check out the Epic TV mega series, Epic Climber. The first two episodes are already out and the third is due on Thursday. That's it from us though. We'll see you tomorrow.